Cold War, right? And with, um, and, and with uh, 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 um, rival conceptions of rights and, and, and how, those, how those rights fit with uh, communism on the one hand and uh, uh, liberal uh, democratic capitalism on the other. Um, uh, so uh, the, the UDHR um, adopted in 1948, um, by the time we, you know, two decades later, by the time we get um, actual binding treaties in 1966, um, the economic, social, and cultural rights have been uh, hived off from civil and political rights and they're, and they're stuck in separate treaties and, and adopted uh, and enter into force uh, separately. Um, and I'm sure folks will know this, <laughs> um, but uh, United States, um, state, state party to one or both treaties? One. one. Folks know which one? PR. Civil and political rights, that's right. Um, and we have signed but not ratified the economic, social, and cultural rights covenant. China, on the other hand, um, is, is in sort of the, 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 other, uh, the other boat mixing my metaphors. Anyway, um, uh, they, they have uh, signed but not ratified the civil and political rights uh, covenant, uh, but they're a state party to the Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights Treaty. Um, so post-Cold War, however, um, there's, uh, there, there's an interesting story to be told about, um, uh, about how the human rights movement as a whole um, sort of starts to go full spectrum. Um, and, and here are some landmarks. 1993, the Vienna Declaration, I'll show you the key sentence from that in a minute. Um, amnesty goes full spectrum in, in 2001, and the Demand Dignity Campaign launches in, in 2009. Um, so, so what are some of the kind of factors um, post-Cold post War that allow for, um, a, allow for human rights organizations like Amnesty International to, to embrace uh, ESCR as well as, as, well as CPR? Um, well, one thing is the end of the Cold War, right? Um, there's a, a softening of the geopolitical rivalries that led to a rigid division um, between, between CPR and ESCR. Um, <clears throat> there's, um, there's a growth in NGOs kind of around the world in the, in the number um, of NGOs and in their prominence, um, and that's, that's around the world in both uh, the Global North and the Global South. Um, and one interesting thing about um, NGOs in the Global South is, um, you know, in whether it's human rights, development, the environment, um, often they just um, aren't, aren't interested in and don't necessarily abide by um, the kind of rigid division that uh, between CPR and ESCR um, that, uh, uh, that we're so used to um, in, the, in the Global North. Um, and then finally, um, another, another factor that's, that's important to understand is just an intensification of, of poverty and, and inequality over the course of the 80s and 90s. Um, and, and especially, um, you know, in, in the global south, you see, uh, you see groups, you see civil society really um, advocating for um, uh, a concerted response to, to poverty and inequality. Um, and, the human rights framework overall has these tools that are quite useful, right, for, for fighting that, the right to health, the right to housing, um, the right to a healthy environment. Um, and um, uh, it, NGOs like Amnesty, like Human Rights Watch had, had largely left those, um, those tools in the toolbox, um, and they're getting pressure from, um, uh, from organizations in the Global South um, as, as they collab, start to kind of increasingly collaborate with these organizations, they're getting pressure to pick up those tools, right, and, and start using them. So it's a much, there's, there's a long story to be told about this, but these are some of the key, these are some of the key factors. Um, so, and, um, so what are some of the kind of markers of, uh, uh, of the human rights movement um, going full spectrum? Here are some, some key ones. The Vienna Declaration, as I said, uh, in 1993, um, affirmed that all human rights are universal, indivisible, and interdependent, and interrelated. Uh, the international community must treat human rights globally in a fair and equal manner on the same footing and with the same 
uh, emphasis. So this is kind of an affirmation of the, of the indivisibility of rights um, and, a, and, a, and a good statement of you know, what it means to treat the human rights framework as, um, as, as a whole. Um, since 1993, um, at the United Nations, um, there have been the appointment of special rapporteurs, um, that is, uh, kind of independent experts whose job is just to go out and investigate things and, and report on them. Um, special rapporteurs on the rights to education, housing, food, health, uh, and, and water and sanitation, just to name a few. These are sort of, these are all core um, economic, social, and cultural rights, of course. Um, and prior to 1993, none of these, um, uh, none of these special rapporteurs had been appointed. Jason, could, could I just add that? Yeah, the please. That we have, last time I gave this class, Michelle Bachelet is now at the UN uh, with a, as, a, as a uh, undersecretary for women's rights. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, special. So that's it. You might add that. We'll add that to the category of the, the new recognition of the status of women. That's right. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Um. And. Um, I, of course, I'm just, I'm just picking out a few developments um, at, at the United Nations. There are, there are all, kinds of other, um, uh, all, all kinds of other developments, like special rapporteurs on the rights to indigenous peoples, um, attention from the official uh, UN human rights bodies to a whole range of issues like um, uh, uh, sort of economic policy decisions and so on that are, that are made possible by, um, uh, by, by the UN going full spectrum. Um, um, okay, what else is going on? Uh, Human Rights Watch uh, begins research and advocacy on the right to health, other ESCR issues. Um, and in 2001, Amnesty International um, at its uh, sort of global uh, governance uh, meeting um, decides, to, decides to go full spectrum, that is to, to embrace the full, the full range of, um, of, of rights in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. As I said, uh, there's, there's a lot more to say about this. If, you, if folks are interested um, in, in this particular story, this is a really good source. Um, Paul Nelson and Ellen Dorsey, who's a former AIUSA board chair, uh, have a book called New Rights Advocacy, Changing Strategies of Development and Human Rights NGOs. Um, and they look, at, they look at sort of three interrelated um, developments. Number one, uh, big, uh, big human rights NGOs going full spectrum. Number two, in the development sector, um, development NGOs um, adopting a rights-based approach to, to development. Um, and number three, the, the growth of kind of specialty organizations like the Center on Housing Rights and Evictions uh, or the Center for Reproductive Rights that just work on particular um, economic, social, and cultural rights. Um, so if you're into that, <laughs> This is a good book. Um, all right. So, <laughs> is it is it for me? <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so, uh, um, so I've said ESCR a million times. What are they? There are different lists. This is this is a convenient one, right? Um, Amnesty published a primer. Um, in 2005 called uh, Human Rights and Human Dignity. Um, and the, there, there are chap this, this is the list that, that, that we um, kind of work from. Water and sanitation, food, health, housing, education, decent work, um, and cultural rights, which usually means the rights of, um, of minority communities. Um, so what are ESCR? This is, this is a, there are different lists, but this is a handy one to, to kind of bear in mind. Um, all right, so your question. <laughs> What's the connection between dignity um, and economic, social, and cultural rights? So here's one answer, right? Um, Article 22. Uh, everyone is a member of society, has the right to social security, and is entitled to realization, dot, 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 uh, of the economic, social, and cultural rights indispensable for his dignity and the, the free development of, of his personality. Um, so, uh, this, this is one of our sort of uh, touchstone texts within, within the Universal Declaration of Human Rights um, and you know, makes, makes the connection explicit. Um, um, does, does that help? <laughs> no, it doesn't help.
define dignity. Yeah. It's basically asking each, each person can define dignity differently. Sure, sure. And it's interesting to me how this yeah. dignity is defined. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, so, yep, yep, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the question, so the question again is, what is the definition of of, of dignity for Amnesty International? And 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 the the answer <laughs> is going to disappoint you. I mean, we don't have we don't have an official definition, right? But but I but I would say roughly, right, that um, um, you know each each person, in virtue of being a human being, um, has a right to the full enjoyment of. Uh, of all of their human rights, um, uh, whether economic, social, and cultural rights or civil and political rights. Um, so uh, um, their, their dignity in, entitles them to that, um, and they are entitled to that in virtue of, um, in virtue of their, their dignity, their um, inviolability of, of <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm talking in circularly, but, um, but, but, but there you go. Okay, we'll leave it there. But, can this, yeah, might, please. I just want to remind the class that remember when we, when we had the uh, talk about Kennedy's recent uh, uh, majority opinion in the, in the case which, uh, which asked for California to release a certain numbers of prisoners, or not release to, to, to less the prison population by a certain number, whatever they did it. The, the claim was, was that, that what California would do was, a, was, a def was an offense against human dignity. And do you remember he didn't... Justice Kennedy didn't say it was a specific 14th Amendment issue or a specific First Amendment issue. So they specific, didn't tie it to a particular article of the Constitution, of the Bill of Rights, but to this sort of broader claim of dignity, which is why um, uh, Jonathan Simon thought this was such an important jurisprudential move, because it's a move by our highest court to ground its, some of its decisions not in, in a specific interpretation of a specific article of the of the of the um, uh, of the Constitution of the Bill of Rights or this or the or the one of the amendments of the Constitution, but to this larger claim. So you're right. It's sort of, it, Jason's right. It was hard to exactly what it means, but wouldn't give an interpretation that in this case, a certain amount of crowding, lack of access to medical care, things that are, count as an offense against dignity. So I think that's the kind of it, it, it's, it's specific not to enumerate and you can't torture them and you can't deprive them of this, and you can't, it's definitely not to make it a numerable list, as I understand it. That's right. But to say that what, we're not going to find what human being is either, when we start the course. But roughly speaking, we, we're on the same page. That's right. That's is right. That, is that sort of, that, and it's, this, it's happening in lots of other areas, which is what the Jonathan Simon discussion, and the text, I think you guys read some of this. Yep. Um, Yes, that's. I guess it's a huge question, but it's one that just goes well beyond. That's right. Pick on Jason. Pick on the Supreme Court. That's right. That's right. Sure. We can make it more specific towards Jason because I think it is an interesting question, just in terms of learning about Amnesty's work. Yep. So in terms of housing, you said you work on housing. The Universal Declaration has Article Twenty Five talking about the right to a home, a shelter, whatever it is. Yep. Yep. And. If you want to connect it to dignity, there's a way, of, there's a normative definition of what is a home or what is a house that your guys are working with, and I think it's interesting to maybe think what, what is enough 